Hey guys, so uh, we're going to just do some uh, quick tips on this beast kit. So I did prime it all up and what I'm doing right now as you can kind of see is I set it up on a flat surface. This is one of my drawing boards on my uh, floor and what I did was I put a, I dremel through here and I put magic sculpt with a pin and some glue. I did the same thing here at this foot and underneath here I did the same thing with the chair but I didn't glue in the or attach these little uh, rollers on the thing yet. I just kind of want to get everything secured and lined up and then I could do that because I wanted to make sure all this was kind of lined up and ready to go. Uh, this is probably one of the hardest parts for this kit as you can kind of see. It's uh, it's just a matter of trying to get this stuff lined up. So this magic sculpt's in there with some glue. It's going to set for a couple hours. I don't even want to touch it. I don't want to move it. I don't want to hit it. I just kind of want to let it sit. So this is one of the hardest parts and the also other part we're going to go to next is the monitor uh, to try to get that attached. But other than that, uh, what's going to happen is I was kind of concerned about these uh, rods going with the chair, you know, the, the little pieces there. Uh, I wanted to make sure that they would go in. So you could kind of glue them in and it would be good, but I, I never really trust glue. So what I think I might do is I might use... Uh, a pin in this one here and one over there and maybe these two back here and what I'll do is I'll put magic sculpt in these holes and I'll attach them but I'll use glue for these three and the three over there so this way this back of the chair is pretty secure and it's ready to go but I'm still debating yet if I'm going to paint up the chair in pieces and then attach it because I think it would be kind of hard to at least try to paint inside in between each of these and then try to you know so i think i could paint up each of these separately and then attach them at the end and clean up anything so that's kind of like what i'm at so far so we're going to go switch over to the desk and i'll show you what i'm doing with the computer monitor on this kit all right so we got the monitor here and the idea with this monitor is it's going to be like this now if you just use glue and you hit this it's going to break off so what I'm doing right here is I got these, this is a metal rod. This stuff is really strong. This is very hard to even cut it with the pliers. So what I'll be doing is I drilled in three holes. I lined them up each. I'm just starting to put in some magic sculpt here. Um, so these pieces are going to go like that. And then I put three holes here and I'm going to do that. So this way, I'm going to have it lean back a little bit, but this metal rods are going to hold it in very well. So this way I can actually paint it and hold it and make sure everything's good. Of course you would love to have it like a hinge go up and down, but you can't, it's resin. So this is what I came up with. So I'm going to fill this in with some uh, Magic Sculpt. Uh, I might put some dabs of glue in there too, just like on the sides, just to kind of hold it. I got my glue, I got my Insta Set, I cut out my rod. So I'm going to keep filling this in and then we're going to attach it. And then this piece should be pretty good and ready to go. So once all that's set, it's just a matter of waiting for everything to get set up, fine-tune everything. I got to patch the side of the desk and then uh, we'll start painting them up. I'm going to be placing the little wheels underneath the beast chair and uh, just to give you guys an idea of what I'm doing is you can kind of see I drummled out on each thing and then I also drummled out a little notch. I'm going to use magic sculpt to put these in because if you use glue, the problem is uh, glue, even though glue works pretty good, when you have something that's pretty heavy sitting on top of the base like this with this much stuff, you see how this kind of like a little wobbly here? The glue, if you kind of hit this, the glue can crack. Now, if you're gluing something where, you know, like an arm into a statue and you're not really having anything that's like heavy on that item, it, the glue works fine. But when you have something like this, it makes me a little worried. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in with Magisculpt on all of these and get into Magisculpt. So at least this is going to be like a secured piece into the thing. Now, the statue doesn't completely put all its weight on this chair because the other foot's on the desk, but I'm trying to make sure everything is even so this way when you do put it on a shelf or something, everything's flush, everything's even, and I don't have to worry. 
So uh, I'm just going to fill all these in and then uh, we'll get a plate. Hey guys, uh, so I'm working on the Beast Kit and I'm not going to do a full blown video but this is going to give you guys an idea of kind of how I do this stuff and maybe give you guys some tips and tricks. Um, I'm just going to do show you guys what I'm doing with the fur at the moment. Really not going to go too crazy with you know the video but as you can see I'm looking at the Beast here and I'm trying to match up the color and everything here. So what I did with the kit is I did a full blown enamel uh, color uh, paint up of it in the garage. So I primed up the kit and then I used this stupid color just to give a nice good blue uh, seal and then this way it helps me with any uh, you know stuff that maybe I miss underneath and then I did some black shadowing and I'm kind of toying with some colors and stuff. So at first I was using this color here and you can see it's over here in the thing and I, it's too I really don't like this color too much. I can't figure out really what's in the color. It's too much of a blue and then when you lighten up with white it's kind of I don't know, maybe it's too much purpley, I guess, color. Whereas this blue right here, this Pia Formula 3, is kind of like the perfect blue as the darkness. And then uh, mixing with the white, I'm getting the color as I want with the screen. So I'm kind of picking it up and trying to get it as close as possible. I know the only problem, though, is looking at a computer screen and looking at paint, it's a big difference. And even if you look at a comic book itself, you know, it's kind of hard. But just kind of give you guys an idea of how I'm painting up the fur and then maybe you know we'll get onto the desk and then we'll get onto other stuff here from there so uh, what I do is in here as you can see I take some of this blue here and then some of this white and I'm kinda of mixing up this little bit of a lighter color and then what I do is I go on to the thing and this is just dry brushing now you don't want to make this soaking wet but you just kinda of start bringing out the fur as you can see so because I put black in the, you know, the muscle area, and then I have the blue over here, and then with the fur, you start getting a gradation with, you know, inside the fur and stuff. So it's kind of, you're kind of painting it like a regular skin tone, except you're just doing a dry brush to get the fur, to bring the fur up. Now I have to be careful with not getting too much uh, paint on here, because I got to keep this smooth for the armor. But I'm just doing all the fur first, because the fur is a little bit easier. And it'll be easier to mask this off here and then really focus on the armor. So you can kind of just see, just keep bringing it out, the fur. And if for any reason I wanted to make it a little bit lighter, I can just kind of add a little bit more white into it. And then you could kind of get other areas a little bit lighter. It's just a dry brush technique, it just kind of, you're just hitting the area, so you're getting all that fur, so you can see the difference already between the two, just by doing that. So a little bit closer, so, so you can see, you're bringing out all this fur, and then, you know, this is all dark black in here, and this is a uh, blue here, so what we'll do is we'll mix up some more. So you can see we got a lot of blackness back here but then we got the blues so it's kind of you just keep bringing it out and the same thing with the the face you just kind of now I'm not really worried about the face itself at the moment because I'm working on the fur and I'm gonna go in with an airbrush it kind of like I guess it's kind of a little bit of a lighter blue because you know this has got some like blacks in there So it's messy. I mean, it's not, you know, something like this, it's just messy and then you get it all over your hand. So it's better to do this type of dry brushing because it's not like it's on the statue and I could just sit there and not touch it. I have to actually hold these pieces. So it's better for, I figure it's better for me to do the dry brushing and then just keep going. So this is where I'm at with the fur. It's just a simple little process, you know, and anybody can do it. 
Now, the, one of the things I like is this brush is very beat up and it's used and stiff and I find those are better than using a brand new one because a brand new one's smooth with the roughness and all broken up. It really helps you get everything around. So, I'm just going to keep doing this. We'll come back after I'm going to start working on something else. And then we'll just keep doing like quick things on the video with the beast because I really do need to focus this on for the client. But I just want to give you guys an idea of kind of how the process goes. All right, so I got all the dry brushing done. So looking at the pictures, if you want, if you want to, you know, on your end, you can use a little bit more of the white, and you can kind of build out some highlight areas too, if you want, you know, because you figure lights up here a little bit more, and then kind of bring up some stuff here and there. So it takes a little time. I don't know. Just pop on the music or radio or movie or whatever on the computer, and just sit there and take your time and just dry brush. So you pretty much getting to where I want it. Uh, I'm probably going to hit a couple more areas here and there. And then I'll just start working on the face and the paws. Because I figure the paws got the little pad. So I'm going to try to make it almost the same color as the face. Just to give a little bit of a touch. And then uh, just keep plugging away on them. Oh yeah, so another thing for uh, with a kit like this. Instead of trying to paint him on the base and trying to move that big ass base around what I did is I made a little custom base what it is just two planks of wood and then I put this piece of wood here to lock these two in place I put this piece of wood to lock those and I put this piece of wood just to kind of lift it up and I just dremel two you know just drill two holes in the wood so now I could put him on a base without worrying about on that huge desk so you know if you have spare wood pieces around and the extra screws and nails you can make yourself a quick little base for anything that you're working on that can support the item and you don't have to worry about using the base that it comes with so if you have to you could be painting on this so while this is drying you could go to the base and you could paint on the base because some stashes you have to use the base and I always paint the base last so it's just a quick little update you know just to give you guys an idea just making something simple and stupid just for uh, you know this thing so after it's all done if I don't need the base anymore I could just unscrew it and then I got the blocks of wood still Alright, so I'm going to do the face now, and I'm just going to use some uh, gray, white, you know, something like a light gray, and that blue, and I'm just going to kind of mist over in the face. Uh, nothing too crazy, just kind of lighten it up a little bit. Give him a little something. I'm going to come in with the paws too, so you can see on the paw areas. Kind of give a little lightness to the paws. So, you know, so we got a little bit of the face and the paws kind of going. And then after uh, I get that done, I'll just detail it up a little bit. Alright, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just going in with some uh, transparency uh, Payne's Gray from the Garage Kits and just kind of darkening up the area. And the reason why I use the transparency is it kind of sort of keeps the stuff together. I'm kind of shading around the face a little bit here and there, getting the eye sockets a little bit darker. Just trying to bring out that little bit of a darkness, but you know, I don't want it to paint his face gray and I don't want to have it a blue uh, mane because I'm looking at the artwork that I was sent by the client and he has sort of a blue face. So I'm trying to keep it together and the paint's gray is a good uh, transparency because it actually has a blue in it. I'm just getting that face built out a little bit more, but darkness, because once you put the teeth in there and everything, it'll start coming together. And uh, I'll have to go in with the paws a little bit with uh, the paint gray as well.